Hello, everybody. Here we are, Facebook Live, and welcome to the good of the whole connection field and the trust frequency embodied and exploring the dance of souls, where we apply the trust frequency principles to relationships. So we have Wowza Alyssa Lodge here with us, who is We've been doing this for a long time together here on the connection field, as well as we've in our doing course. This for a year. You know, we've been doing this for a year now. This is our anniversary. Yeah. yeah. And we have Andrew Cameron Bailey here. Hello, everybody. So we uh, have, Andrew and I have an online course called The Dance of Souls. And a quick question. Yes. Did you hit record? No, oh. I can hit record. Hit record. Just put the fun of it. What a novel idea. Just put the fun of it. <laughs> it takes three uh -huh. minds rather than one. Yeah. yeah. So there we, go. we have a course, an online course called The Dance of Souls, The Relationship Revolution. And you can go to the trustfrequency.net, the dance of souls, or you can just go there and pick choose the dance of souls. And it'll tell you all about it and you can register and there's even a discount coupon till the end of April. So um, yeah, I hope you try it out. And Isn't there something about an ebook? Is that relevant? Yeah, to this and, and oh, we yeah. have an ebook, the Conscious Loving Universe, ah. a guidebook that you Ooh. can get on the trustfrequency.net CLU ebook. And it's actually a free book. It's a free ebook also known as a free book a free book so what we're going to do today is we're going to have a conversation between the three of us and if there were any participants in the zoom room we'd include them but there aren't any right well, now as soon as people show up yeah. yeah and meanwhile our conversation is about celebrating the ego self Whoa. okay so <laughs> Well, um, one thing we do, I want to do first is just to give a, a, a synopsis of what this course is about and what this, this trust frequency construct is, so that we know for this discussion what, the, what construct we're talking about it within. And that is that we as humanity, do you remember the definition of humanity, sweetie? Mm, do you want, so. What's you want to say it? A collection of divine yeah. autonomous yeah. sovereign beings who have chosen to incarnate on this planet, each of us with a purpose mm. and a gift on our soul's journey to wholeness. Yeah, could you hear that okay? Mm. Okay, that, that came across because you, you said it sort of fast. Well, it was beautiful just for a moment, uh, Andrew. Just that sense of allowing our body, you know, is allowing my own body you know, taking, I just heard inside myself, sovereign being would be beautiful. Actually, we could all even say maybe short statements together. And if it's just a lift of the heart, you yeah. know, and sovereign beings, what was the next line? I mean, the next piece. Well, most sovereign beings. beings divine. Divine, divine. We're part of divinity. The part of divinity. So maybe a pause, and I could even come in part of divinity well you're always divine Rosa, so <laughs> well, just for the audience you know to kind of help to slow it down and, and then see what, movement what, in autonomous. It. Autonomous. Autonomous. Yeah. Autonomous. what to do we actually have free huh. will well Whoa. most people don't know that either so they don't know we're, we don't know we're divine we don't know we're autonomous sovereign means kind of the same mm. That we don't know we're sovereign, we're majestic. We're each our majestic. own. Majestic. Yeah, you, you know? That is a cool word to just go majestic. <laughs> you know? Wow. Yeah. It's so fun to embody our phrase. We mm -hmm. got a wow out of wowza. <laughs> yeah, <for sure. laughs> hey, that's not, I, I'd even have you do it again. Just. Yeah. They, like, you let yourself loose and that beautiful theatrical being that you are. Huh? Yeah. So yeah. if you go to the dictionary and look up the word humanity, you will not come across this. Mm. 
humanity is a collection of divine autonomous mm -hmm. sovereign beings mm -hmm. who have chosen to mm -hmm. incarnate on earth on their soul's journey or on our soul's journey to wholeness, mm -hmm. each of us with a purpose mm -hmm. gift. So, that? yeah. So that word chosen is our overarching act of free will that we gave to the conscious loving universe because this is predicated on the fact that it is a conscious loving universe that loves us unconditionally and which means that it gives us everything we ask for. So we asked this conscious loving universe to take us on this soul's journey to wholeness, which is our journey to self love and self acceptance mm -hmm. and alignment with that divinity and to get us to bring our true gift mm -hmm. to the party of life, mm -hmm. okay? And that true gift is us, all of us, mm -hmm. not just the parts that show up to be loved, to be accepted, to be wow. successful. And so what we're gonna talk about is that part of us that did show up, mm -hmm to be loved, to be successful, to fit in to society as we were born into, but we actually chose our parents and we chose the circumstances and our souls actually magnetized behaviors and interpreted behaviors so that we would take on wounds that would ultimately be our shadow pieces that we show us what we actually think about ourselves, that we think we're less than. We came here to heal that. We came there to, to, to learn that we are these magnificent, as Andrew says, roving sensory organs of the divine. And we came with a magnificent, amazing gift and circumstance that loves us more than we do because circumstance is taking us on this journey to our essence, to love all of ourselves. So what we're gonna talk about today, so is that all, do you wanna put anything in about yeah. all that? Wowza? Yeah, the, I, I really got a different piece of free will that the God force is free will. And he gives us every, she gives us everything it is. All the superpowers of the God force are given to us, including free will, except that we forget, right? I mean, we do a lost and found game or some kind of <laughs> hide, yeah. how hide you seek. <laughs> the game of Clue, CLU. <laughs> Breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah, CLU stands uh, for Conscious Loving Universe. Loving so, oh, yeah. Right? People say, oh, I'm on my spiritual path. I'm searching for God or searching for my inner soul or whatever it is. So in a sense, it's a search for something perhaps that we once knew and we forgot because we emerge into this reality through the birth canal, look around and go, help! <laughs> and immediately forget everything we knew because I suspect we knew an awful lot there. And as little, we know that from the study of little babies, they remember past mm -hmm. they remember things that then they forget oh, by the time they're 10 I... months old they've forgotten all that stuff it's faded like a dream you wake up and you'll never forget this dream and five minutes later it's gone right mm -hmm. so, like that. so the dream and what's the dream and what are we here for seems we're here to learn mm -hmm. we have to become because we are divine, autonomous, sovereign beings. What does it mean to be a being? Someone who is in the process of being. That's a huge question as well, just that. What does it mean to be or not to be? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. That is the question. You know, I guess while you were talking, Andrew, you know, I think of all the years of therapy, 
all the years at Esalen, you know, working on, on people's shadow, their problems and opening them to a greater uh, consciousness, right? Yeah. And it is amazing, you know, the, the deep down, I swear to God, if you go deep enough, everybody knows there's something so much more than they appear. And yet, what is it? The collusion in the drama, to have a good drama, in a way, God had to lose himself a little bit and get lost <laughs> in this incredible dynamics of separation from the source, separation. Ah, the status game of the world. I am, you're not. <laughs> my God is on my side and it's not on yours. I mean, the separation that I think we're all the yearning, the searching, it's all separation, right? And like, oh my gosh, you know, to find these superpowers of the God force now. I think that's what we're kind of, I know they're in here. <laughs> and to kind of bring them out like treasures, lost treasures, yeah. right? Right. And, and our, what we're saying is it's the job we came here to do. So there's no shame, no blame no, for our, our stories, for our victim perpetrator stories, poor pitiful me. And there's Heather. Heather's joined us. So we, Hello, Heather. We're, we're happy to have you if you'd like to contribute. Our what you're saying is it's the job you came here to do so no shame no blame. oh i'm sorry i have some music on i'm sorry stories for that's all right that was fun so <laughs> anyway feel free to contribute and i hope you come on with your picture but if you don't you don't um but it's lovely to have you here and so what we're we're having a conversation celebrating the ego self so what we'd love for you to bring in any thoughts you have but what what i was just saying was that that we that it's the job we came here to do to align with our divinity and walk into our true purpose our true gift that is us all of us not just the ego self who showed up and has gotten us this far so it's not that the, from this perspective, the ego is a good thing. It, gave, it brought us this far. We survived, we're, we're, we've, we've made it this far. Andrew and I say to each other, well, we've made it this far. <laughs> and so we wanna love our ego self. We wanna say, thank you, thank you, thank you for getting us this far because without you, we would have, we would have collapsed in a mass of protoplasm of who knows what, you know, just feeling so sorry for ourselves for all the things that we don't have, that we didn't do, that, that um, all the experiences in, that have come to us that we're saying came to us because our soul asked for them, okay? In this construct, it's all love, everything, absolutely. And this is one thing that's really important to take certain things as absolutes. And we're not saying what we're saying is absolutely true. It's up to you to decide for yourself what's absolutely true. But we're saying take some things as absolutes. And we're suggesting taking the idea that there is only love there is only free will and there's only the soul's journey to wholeness as absolutes for this exercise. So then we see that there's no more victim. There's no more perpetrator that the victim actually asked the perpetrator to do this behavior so that we could take this journey to wholeness and learn to love all of ourselves and accept all of ourselves and bring the true gift we promised to bring to the party. Mm -hmm. So let's just all give our ego selves a big <laughs> hug. <laughs> a big hug. And anybody have any thoughts on that matter? I wouldn't mind saying something. Yeah. Okay. So 
yeah, as human beings, we appear to be somewhat schizophrenic. We be, seem to be somewhat divided. We seem to have a higher self, a lower self, a left brain, a right brain. And some of us are oriented more this way than that way. And so a lot of us are somewhat confused. So I just like to, in that context, to talk about this thing that Freud, he, I think he coined the phrase or he quite really, it's an ancient Greek word, I think. But to me, it simply means the self that when I individuate as Andrew, my true self. So here's the point, there's the true self. And if we like the true self and the false self, the Sufis call the false self the nafs, the illusory self, the maya, right? These, these mm. illusions that we fall prey to. Mm. And it really depends on our fundamental assumptions about the nature of reality, the nature of ourselves, the rate relation, the nature of the universe. Hmm. So we've got two selves, apparently, each of which can lay claim to saying, I'm your ego. <laughs> no, no, I'm your ego. And one of them is a construct, maybe the mask that we put on to pretend to be something that we don't believe we are, but we think that for my daughter, for my dad to accept me, I have to pretend to be a certain kind of young man, for example. And then there's the real self, the true self, that beautiful flower at the heart of my soul that wants to emerge. And I think we could call that, is that okay to call it the true self? <laughs> Anything is okay. <laughs> we were having an earlier discussion on the subject. So um, yeah, so we, if we indeed are divided selves, what if, yeah, we are, if indeed we are divided being with the sort of split personality, true self versus false or fake self. Hmm, this wonderful term, fake it till you make it. Ha, huh. so I think that just, that's just, I just had the idea of that as sort of some degree of context in this conversation. To what degree um, are you right now on the Zoom call seeing my true self or a mask that I might be putting forth to make the right impression or whatever that might be. Okay, so as yeah. humans, that's one yeah. of the ways we- Do you, Either of you ladies have any thoughts on that? So- um, uh, I, I used to love in, in acting school when they would say fake it till they make it. And at least it's good to meet another actress, hi. Um, and some people would always say to me, oh, oh, wait, I have this music on still. Hang on, let me turn that off. Um, oh, well, you're an actress, so you must be a really good liar. And I would say to them, actually, it's the opposite. I find the people that are the best actresses are the worst liars. Because what's happening when I'm acting is that I'm accessing authentic emotions that live inside of me. And if I'm lying, then you can tell and it's not believable and it doesn't feel good to watch it. So I always gravitate towards those Sundance films, towards the ones that that aren't the big blockbuster hits because they make me feel something. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that's because the actors are not lying. I think they're telling the truth. What they've done is they've studied the character so well that they know the socioeconomic impact on that individual and what that feels like in their body even. Mm -hmm. Even something like that mm -hmm. has an effect on the body. And then later on in life, studying Chinese medicine and learning how we can treat the emotions to affect the physical and all of that kind of coming together for me was a really beautiful time in my life because it all had to do with truth. And it all had to do with, you know, the most important question I could ever ask my patients was, do you feel like you have enough emotional support? That was always, always the good window in to getting the truth from them because usually that was the key to their unhappiness or their ill health is that they didn't have either enough emotional support or they felt lonely. And, um, you know, in England, they have a, a, a ministry of 
loneliness there. They're very concerned about loneliness. And so I was wondering, you know, how you guys think that ties into heart coherence and really being with one another if we can't get over the idea that somehow we are lonely, isolated beings. What is your name? My name's Heather. <laughs> Heather. Hi, Heather. Yeah. You know, Rosa, have you met before, Heather? Have you met Rosa? I've met Eliza, but like I've just been watching. I have I haven't said anything. <laughs> but I, I I just want to um, connect with you. This the latest book I'm writing is the Sacred Actor. There is nothing, no one. We are not. And well, hearing your ideas of acting, all I'm doing is bringing the actor's training to daily life so that when we uh, find our not enough part and we can really play it from the inside out. I mean, we really see, you know, the physiology of it. There's a certain tone of voice and bring it into artistry. That's the difference. Performance art, it is illusory. We are making it up, but it is real as a human. And somehow when I finally could really play, you know, that, 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 that scared little child in this grown up body and wanting to be loved. Can you see it? That voice, I, no one would take me seriously. The role controlled me in everything I did. I had this lovely little quivery voice, but I didn't know it until I stepped into it as an actor for daily life and whammo, I was now the one with it. And I wasn't lost in her part. And yet I could feel her vulnerability, which was a real gift and calling on that vulnerability when it's needed. That's beautiful, Waza. You know, we were just listening um, today with Stan Groff, who did all this. Uh, um, and you know, Eslin, and you probably know who knew him and Andrew did too. Oh. but. But this whole idea of with, with LSD going into the emotions deeply into trauma, and people were saying, is that bad to be going into the emotions? And he said, no. He said, feeling the emotion going so deep is the, the funeral pyre for that emotion. So it's, it's, I, think, I think it's related to what you two are saying. And especially you, Wowza, of, of feeling that pitiful, that that vulnerable little girl, and bringing it into life, and yes. actually bringing her forward instead of hiding her under the mask of oh, I'm supposed to be grown up, and I'm supposed to be smart and well liked, and but guess what? I don't feel smart. I don't feel well liked. I feel like a you know, and because those are the that what we came here to release into the light instead of hiding them behind the mask. And that's what this course is about. It's about instead of hiding it behind the mask of success to bring it forth. I don't know if that's what you were saying. Absolutely. I, I, just, I just have for myself a simple way that I came here to, to play in a theater of lost and found. And the role I came here to play was to sep a sep was separation. And the challenge, would I ever slip through the cracks to really come back to who I really am? And that was the beautiful drama. And now I can just see as you were talking that um, victim self, the, the needy one, she did give me a gift. And that is my vulnerability. I can feel now so much more closely, you know, how we've all, you have a little victim self, you know, we, we are trying to hide on some level because we were separate. We were separate. We believe we were separate. So somehow, what is the physiology? What is the, what is the role of the separate self? Can I walk or talk? You know, can I breathe or sound or move or sit, stand? Can I really be here consciously? I can be her consciously, I can let go of her consciously with love. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now what else is possible? 
<laughs> you know, the big one, <laughs> the big self has a chance, I think, to, to take center stage. Huh? Yeah, yeah, and I think that I, I agree with you. And I think that sometimes you can get lost in a role if oh, you what? really don't know where your center is. You can get lost in a role and we've seen that happen in with with famous people like really sensitive actors not being able to come out of this dark place that they've gone so that they could just play a part but you know at the end of the day one of my favorite exercises we did was something called rasa boxes do you know that one i don't know it's rasa. i went to a very hippie school up in upstate new york so it's like you know kind of like roll around on the floor, pretend you're an amoeba kind of stuff. That's, but, that's easy for me. Yeah, you know, stuff, right? Like start from an amoeba. I, know, I, I got that one. Just know that you're the amoeba, okay? Feel the amoeba, lay on the floor, be the amoeba. I'm like laying there, like I'm 18. I don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> but um, then we would draw these boxes on the floor and we would take chalk and we would do the these nine emotions, Raudra is anger, Vibhatsa is disgust, and uh, Shringara is sensuality. And we would practice holding space outside the boxes. And one at a time or whenever we felt called, we would jump in, we would take the breath, we would take the body shape, we would take the, uh, the, the Vira, uh, Raudra, or the Karuna, or whatever it was. And we would just let whatever needed to come out, come out. But once you stepped out of the box, you went back to satsa. You went back to that, that place where your vision is, is in a kind of neutral state where you can see with your periphery all the way because when you're outside, you're getting ready for the next player to come on stage and you need to be able to see. Oh, right. So, there are two parts. Yeah. You know, there is the, the, in the, it, the character we can out. Immediately, you have to step out to hold space for the other players. And if you don't, you might get hit by something off stage. Like, you've got to step out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I played um, Reno Sweeney and Anything Goes, when you have 11 costume changes in an hour and a half or two hours, I mean, you got to really differentiate what you're doing with your body and with your emotions you have to and I remember one night I yelled at the costume girl because I was really in the moment and that I was just it wasn't happening fast enough I said what the fuck are you doing but that's not because I was mad at her it was because the character was pissed off she just got slighted and just saying you know whatever yeah. uh, I but love you have to a of a shot of a toy of a myself yeah. But <laughs> a little universal language. <laughs> it cuts the yeah. word, you know, words, people are very sensitive to words. They're just sounds. But when you just make the sounds as language, it's fun. And it kind of does the job. This is my uh, Antigone. Do you know Antigone? Yeah. Ooh. All right. These beautiful archetypal feminine goddesses. Mm. Yeah. I have my fellow player here. There, Rosa has, look, here she is. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun to shape shift. You know, we're all, we're all, you know, global shamans now. I mean, you know, we, we had to go through all of the hell and high water, right? I mean, and, and we, we've really been paying our dues and it's like, I just feel right now, both of you, you know, that all of us right now, it's just like, oh my God, it really is time to take off the mask, you know, and to play who we really are, you know, I mean, to be, to be and enjoy it. And then to enjoy still all the roles that we've ever played, except now we know we're playing them. Oh, you know, I mean, I would never want to lose my little kid, you know, I mean, it just that, it, but just three minutes of her, you know, rather than a half a day <laughs> or a week. <laughs> what is your dream role? My dream role is the God Force, the only role we came here to play. Oh. <laughs> The conscious my loving universe. I mean, the, the I mean, the universal homo amore universalis. Whoa, 
wow. Then opening up the breath of lifetimes entangled with all breaths, all the sounds of the universe are throbbing in our bodies. And we can just talk English and let all that stuff fly. And we're free. We have, we have free will <laughs> to come down. Wow. <laughs> down. <laughs> I like curtain down. You know, whoop. And then we can even get regular. Call in the smart guy up in the head. Okay, what do you think about all this crazy stuff going on? You know, will it will people buy it? <laughs> so play all the roles. See, not attach, ah, uh, non-defined is what the conscious loving universe taught me. Can't be defined anymore. You should take your hair down. So yeah, it's all our roles. Andrew's yeah, got when you're when you're accessing the Ooh. Pardon? You go, honey. No, I was just Wowza is Andrew's um, sacred, sacred acting, acting coach. coach. Andrew's got a whole lot of various and sundry characters in there. Uh, I'm pretty much uh, what you see is what you get kind of thing. Oh, no, you can't fool me. <laughs> Even this afternoon, you were playing, you know, with the character. You, oh, I just see so many. Oh. My, my, my name is, my name is Henry. What's, what, what's your oh, name? Henry. I'm just I'm, a little mirror. Oh, wow, 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 wow. Mirror yeah. all these characters I see. I mean, wow, yeah, that yeah. was brilliant. <laughs> so look but what we're coming off here, yeah. right? See, the instant you can pour out the most incredible feelings because they're all real. They really all have energetically. And then boom, oh, you know, because we're whole. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we have to remind each other of that. And that's what I feel this is all about. It's to keep reminding each other how extraordinary we all are. <laughs> yes. And you know, yes, Andrew, did you want to say something? Uh -huh. What I like to do in this tr trilogy of us here, Raza and Connie and me, is from time to time in these presentations to just bring it back to the initial intention, which was to have a conversation, a discussion about the role of the ego in, yeah. in what? In our journey, maybe yeah. in our journey to wholeness. What is the ego separate from our wholeness at which point do i integrate and become the real me mm. is there a real me mm. do you remember when peter sellers was asked that question mm. who is the real peter sellers peter sellers replied they used to be a real me but i had it surgically removed you're right <laughs> exactly so, non-defined huh see i'm not defined. an example of someone he truly was my great inspiration i'm british and he was the most inspiring people person in my life throughout my young years wow. and he blew out he died at what 46 years old or something really? 10 lifetimes in a very short time and he became lost in his characters he was never mm -hmm. never ever he became almost mm -hmm. schizophrenic in the sense that mm -hmm. he was always on he was always so there was never just the regular relaxed people mm -hmm. you could sit down and have a cup of tea with, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so I think with the ego self, you know, this, this is, we're talking about celebrating that ego self, but not getting lost in it, mm -hmm. right? But and that's what happens. So <laughs> that's the, the, and with the, the actor, with Peter, he got lost in his various masks yeah. and couldn't access his true self. And I wonder even about Robin Williams, mm. um, you know, they say, you know, that, that he, he had a, a very deep depression, you know, but here he was out there for everyone and funny and smart and all this stuff. Mm. But was he really free to, did he give himself permission to be him, yeah. you know? Um, so actors, I bet actors can really get stuck in that stuff. And a lot of, and comedians, so, a lot of comedians really struggle emotionally. That's interesting that comedians in particular are vulnerable. Yeah. And, and so for, for this process with this dance of souls course that, 
that is the basis of this whole conversation. It's, it's about honoring and celebrating that ego self because the ego has been given such a bad name. So what, what the whole point of this is to say, hey, guess what, everyone? Celebrate and honor the ego self that's gotten oh, wow. us this far in our process, but don't get lost in it and, and, and listen to circumstance, listen, because the conscious loving universe is communicating with us through circumstance, watch the universe, listen to our hearts, align with our inner knowing and take bold, committed action into our true self because the universe is helping us on this journey, but we, we thought we wanted to go in this direction so that we'd be successful and make a lot of money and have the everything so that we, and, and people would love us. And then um, we, what you got there? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, let me let's say, so, so we showed up for all that and the circumstances saying to us, it's time now for your true self in the pandemic has really set us, stay, gotten us to stay home. We don't have all the distractions that we used to, um, to keep our ego self you know, really in place. And now we've got to come home to ourselves and, and, and we, we have the opportunity now to become our true selves through this whole fall, falling apart of the structures and all the distractions and everything. So here's the gift of the pandemic. Here's the gift of that loneliness. If we go into our loneliness mm. and we feel that loneliness and we say, okay, am I okay or am I not okay? That divine essential self, am I ready to go come bursting forth as, as my true self now? Because my ego self isn't needed anymore because that whole structure is falling away. So now we have to go into our true self. Well, so, Connie, can can we play with this now? I yeah, mean, can go we for it. do a little no, with all of us. This takes all of us. You know, like what what is your what does your separate self look like? What does she sound like? What is yours, Heather? You know that you could say you're maybe your normal, regular, familiar personality. You know what's 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 that what's that part that basically pulls in? You know. What is she I, I, I think it'd be fascinating for people to actually see when we say a lot of these things, they're very beautiful concepts, but it's another thing to actually, you know, see it in flesh, like, what it actually looks like. Yeah. So I think a big part of this is each of us, each, each, each person who I perceive as other, Connie's not me, she's Connie. Wowza, you're not me, you're Wowza. Heather, there you are. So what is the role of these others in, so we know from the spiritual perspective that we are all one, that separation is an illusion. And yet, what a beautiful illusion. In other words, each of us, I think one good metaphor is each of us is a mirror mm. for the other. So when Connie and I are looking at each other adoringly, that is a beautiful mirror of something that's me. I see myself reflected and I see all this beauty and I realize, oh, that's me. <laughs> On the yeah. other hand, at times it's not so beautiful because we might be having a- Oh, different... there is me too. <laughs> a little dance. That's the we part we have a little dance. We might be doing the beautiful that. one, that's me. But the one, that's not me. <laughs> but it is. So how do we start loving the one that's a little nasty, you know, a little fatigued and tired and bitchy and groany and moany? You know, that's another another whole kettle of fish. <laughs> different roles that our mirrors play that we mirror for each other. This, yeah, this exactly. loving reflection that we give that doesn't always feel loving, but if there's nothing but love in the entire universe, then it actually has to be loving. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> and so on a collective basis, there's all that that's going on out there, the they that are doing that. And guess what? There's all one. We are it. It's all aspects of us playing itself out. And that's the important thing is the whole individual shadow 
coming into the light and being released and the collective shadow being coming into the light and being released. So, because we've, we're, we're in a, a big event now with this shift of consciousness and shift into the, the higher, mm -hmm. higher frequencies where the laws are expanded and it's a whole new ball game. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a big job to do and look at it playing itself out. So Heather, what have you been up to there? I'm painting. What, what are you doing? It looks like in, fun. In the three dimension and the third dimension, I was painting. Let's see what you got there. Oh, yeah. Like candle? Um, no, it's a kombucha bottle. Oh, and nice. I drinking it and then I painted it. I uh -huh. like and, that. And the name of this piece of art is um, don't drink the water. There's blood in the water. Ooh, I mean, it doesn't look scary, but uh, when I was doing it, I was thinking about all of the water that's contaminated and all the children that don't have clean drinking water. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Beautiful. So we just um, keep our attention on the clean drinking water for mm. everyone. Mm. And um, Here's, so. to, here's to clean, beautiful, pure water. Yeah. See the symbol for water? Ah. Mm -hmm. See why I always have my camera off? It's because I'm always doing something crazy and I don't want to distract. Oh, good for you. Uh. No, it is a multitasking world now <laughs> yeah. of creative souls that <laughs> definitely can do many, 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 many things at once. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to disturb anybody, you know, so I just keep my camera off usually. Uh, well, you've been a nice, wonderful contributor to this conversation. And it really, you, you actors, I'm surrounded by all you actors. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's it, because life is, is a movie. We're actually the script writers for the people in our lives. It's our, the, our whole life is our movie. And people are showing up with scripts we've written for them, for our soul's journey. So that's this perspective and that, that, that everything is serving us all. The, and, 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 it, and in this construct, abuse has to be serving us. Even all the, the, terrible all the horrible things, stuff yeah. that people have gone through in this construct of absolutes, there's only love, there's only the soul's journey to wholeness, there's only free will, then guess what? We don't know another soul's journey and we don't even realize our own because we're in this good and evil victim perpetrator mm -hmm. paradigm and, and shifting into realizing the gift of it all. Um, Heather, I wonder what you think. I know Wowza has been through a lot in her life and I know you have too, uh, Heather. What do you, you Okay, Wowza, what's your job? <laughs> yeah. What you got, Wowza? Pardon? Do you wanted to speak? Oh no, no, no! I just have to. I'm just saying, I have to leave in a, a, a minute or two, and I. Don't. Yeah. Right, you're okay. off. To, you're Everybody off. To okay, so we'll let we'll, we'll let you run. But yeah. Heather, I was wondering what um, what your thoughts are on on that because I know you've had some challenges. Bye, Wowza. We love you. Bye. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I. I, I left the theater business in my early 20s. I was interested in other things and because I just wasn't feeling good in that industry. And as many of you know, I did go through, hi, Jeff, welcome to the circle. Um, I did go through uh, a kidnapping. I was gone from the Zoom community I was part of for a while, everybody was worried. And I think I came out of it so well because all the trauma I've already been through, there's nothing that they could have said or done that was going to scare me. And I realized that they wanted me to think and feel a certain way that I just knew I didn't think and feel. I just knew myself too well for them to be able to manipulate me. And at the end of the day, um, a month and a half went by really fast. And I painted some amazing skateboards that got stolen, but somebody has that painting. Somebody, somebody's got a painted skateboard that I spent like a good 24 hours on probably. Um, you know, I got through that experience through singing and through art. 
and um do you feel it, like it served you say again do you feel like it served you that it somehow it was brought your soul brought it to you for your growth and for your journey and bringing your true gift do you feel that yeah, absolutely. My soul decided to have these experiences before I came here so that I could help other people walk through it. Exactly. And I've known this for a long time. I, I had to adopt that theory. After the first few traumas, I had to adopt the theory that that they were all so that I could then teach other people how to get through it. And um, And this last one, what it did, was it freed my voice. My voice was blocked for many years. I couldn't sing to my full capacity. I couldn't speak to my full capacity and having to yell in order to get, in order to stay safe, freed up my voice. And now um, I feel like I'm having a much greater impact on the world and that we have work to do. And um, it's time. We don't really have to, there's more, there's plenty of women like me that are in that circumstance right now. And we we need to do something about it. Um, is this is it's dangerous out there. Yeah, it is. I'm glad yeah. you made it through. Heather. Yeah, and I'm wow, we didn't we didn't know about that. Yeah, I, I knew about it, you and did. I'm so I glad that, that that you're sort of proving out our thesis that it it is there to serve you ultimately. And um, so we're going to have to sign off now because the men are going to come the men's on. Men's meetings beginning men's shortly. Meeting. Yeah. So I'll get off Facebook Live. It's been a pleasure having you with us, Heather, and uh, and Wowza, who had to run off to go to China um, on Zoom. China she, on she Zoom. She meets with but... the Chinese she has for many years. So um, we will sign off of Facebook Live now. And.